Sacramento's. Here we go. Big Sacramento. Yeah, last week we were talking and uh, we uh, ran out of time, but mm-hmm. I also probably should have went over to compensate for some strange Facebook anomaly with Facebook Live. We apologize on their behalf for all the crimes that they're about to commit. Um, we were talking about St. Benedict Metal yes. and uh, the crucifix. and I'm not sure. Okay, we, Generally, we were just talking about sacramentals in general. We understand that you have to have a level of faith with it. It works better the mm-hmm. more piety you have, which means you know the less sinning you do, the more it. things you do to serve God. You can't treat them as superstitious um, objects of uh, like good luck charms or anything. Mm-hmm. They're silent intercessions, prayers in themselves. Like you wear the St. Benedict yes. medal to, to bed at night, and they, it has, if you read about it online, uh, it has an exorcism built into it. So in a way, it's sort of like having St. Benedict, uh, you yes. know, like... You know, saying, be gone, demons, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, I have some some sort of thing from last week. No, it's okay. What kind okay, of thing you got going on? There. All right, there we go. All right. Well, so the, it but up. these are the, the, uh, the two. What, see, we don't usually, unless it's a rosary, we don't uh, recommend crucifixes uh, <clears throat> uh, for protection. But As a with sacramental. The so, in other yeah. words, when somebody calls you guys and says, okay, I need some help, and, you know, I need to, like, build my faith, and I need to get back out of this dark place, that's what Ken's talking about, that we're like, okay, let's get one of these, let's get one of these active in your life, because this is a, a faith aid. Like, you know, when you're hungry and somebody says, hey, okay, you got no money, go down to the food pantry or go down to the church. This is a food aid. Now, we're handing out faith aids or we're helping you find faith aids. Same thing. Mm -hmm. You feed your body. You got to feed your soul, folks. Okay. You feed your body three times a day. You think that your faith can use at least one meal a day? Don't get me started. Don't get me started. So those are the most common. <laughs> I know. Okay, put me back in the cage, please, now. Okay. Um, I give out the miraculous medal to people who might be having sleep paralysis problems, and there's a suspect that it could be, uh, you know, uh, sexual related, <coughs> and the succubus, as they would say, um, to create special devotions to the Blessed Mother, consecration yes. prayer, the three Hail Marys prayer, and that sort of thing. Either the person who lived there before you. In the bed, slept, or, you know, a, the person themselves might be struggling with, you yes. know, purity and morality. That, you know, usually an innocent person, you know, is not, uh, not going to be affected in a major way, because they can't. But this uh, this just another way to put on the armor. Yes. Um, let's move to some of the other ones. And you or, guys you know, jump why in. Don't you, why you don't you ask Christopher or um, Well, no, Jennifer. they can jump in when they want. I'm not going to sit there and put them on the spot and go, hey, why don't you tell us all about it, you know. You guys want to, you know, bring up something about it that's an interesting point? Christopher, do you have pop any interesting in. points to pop off about this? Show the initiative. Um, well, yeah, I was, I was just thinking, you know, this, <clears throat> this mm-hmm. thing, uh, you know, I, I've heard some people say, well, that's just... Uh, Form of Christian magic. Well, n- no, this is uh, <laughs> kind of like you know, it, fairy it, dust. Uh, like like uh, Ken said, you have to have a level of faith in it. But yes, mm-hmm. in and of itself, it is simply still an object. But it is you know something especially that's been blessed. Um, it, it's been which by itself, the word itself means set apart for a particular reason in the service of God. Um, that's what the whole word consecration means, and, and to bless something means to set it apart. Yes. And, um, and you know, I, I, it, I'm thinking of the Old Testament when the high priest would wear the, the, uh, the breastplate with the stones. Yes, um, so beautiful. It, it, uh, it was a physical object that was not anything else other than it reminded in fact in the text I, I can't quote it word for it but basically God says whenever you wear the the high priest wears these stones mm-hmm. they yep. will be like he's carrying the people on, on him and I when I see him I will see those stones and remember the people hmm. it was a reminder it was, it was a it was a form of that presence exactly and and here we you know uh, we carry that through into the sacramentals the the holy water 
yeah. the crucifix, the rosary, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, different things like that. They are a presence, that, and I think, you know, for people to kind of help understand, it's almost like, say, for instance, when, um, say, a husband has gone on a business trip for a while, the wife misses him, and she may wear his, one of his T-shirts. Or... Oh, we did that to my dad one. when he went to the o when he went on the ocean cruises. You know, in the Navy, we all used to grab Dad's T-shirts. You're so right, Chris. Did you wash it? First? We slept. Yeah, no, no, no. We go in the dirty laundry. We go grab one of Daddy's T-shirts. It was like we miss Daddy. Good point, Christopher. Right, and the, and these are all reminders of that presence of God in our lives, mm -hmm. and our belief in them is simply that I believe this is this is you're with me. And uh, and we go from there. So, mm -hmm. excellent right. point. Yeah, these are pretty common metals. Uh, Kevin and Jennifer, I'm sure that uh, they use holy you, water and um, exercise well, uh, salt. Yep, find them handy and pass them out uh, on several occasions. Uh, Saint Benedict yeah. and yeah, we had and six medals go out this week. Yeah, six medals. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent kids. You know, what? with the medals. Uh, and and you know sacraments and stuff. Mm -hmm. you got you got two sides. You got the theological side and you got mm -hmm. the psychological side. Mm -hmm. and on the theological side, it's faith based. And on the, on the psychological side, skeptics will say, "Well, that's a placebo effect if it works." Yeah. And what a Dumbo's is, well, feather. You need faith for it to work. For a placebo to work, you need faith. You need to believe that it's working. Yes. So either way, what difference does it make if the if the result is being gained? And I believe it's a, it's it's you know divine, but uh, yeah. you know, but for the skeptics out there, you know, um, if if they're going to argue that it is you know placebo, I, I say well you know um, that it, it just comes back to one that that's a, a full circle. Yeah, we do. We help families on a on a daily basis. Yeah, and you know we arm them with metals. We give them we get them the salt if they can't get them, or we get them the oils, mm -hmm. the holy. We get them the frankincense. We get them the myrrh. We get all this stuff. Oh, that's left. wonderful. And, you know, we get prayers and we explain to them. One of the most important things you need to have is a plug in to God. That's right. And you need to wear your spiritual armor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Jake, it's it's not. It's not enough. Hallways, even in the pool. Precise. Oh yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We tell people never to take it off. Mm -hmm. We had somebody come into the resource center yesterday. Um, <clears throat> Had a couple things happen uh, in a, a place they were staying with somebody, and, and they just wanted to talk, or she wanted to talk. And, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> by the end of it, we had given her uh, a medal to take with her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when she left, she, she said, You know, I'm so glad I stopped her just to talk. You know, I think we spent like 45 minutes with her. Yeah, oh, how talking nice. Her about different things, and, and you know, um, <clears throat> you know, just going through stuff with her and everything. And, and, uh, you know, trying to get her to calm down and relax a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, they definitely, uh, you know, I believe they work. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're a good thing. A few of our colleagues, um, I can mention their names, Jim Stiebrell, uh, Russell Irby, Billy Vanderbilt, or other denominations, Pentecostal, Methodist, and um, I don't remember what uh, Jim Stiebrell's. I used to have an Episcopal priest that would actually come on site when I was doing house blessings, and he would actually make holy water for me on site mm -hmm. and then walk through the house with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And that wow. was, that, yeah, that was when I was, you know, I had fallen away from the Catholic Church because I was in a period of, um, I, w I was in a, a period of uncertainty, unsurety, and I, I was mm -hmm. feeling like the, um, what do you what do you call that, Christopher? The the prodigal son. Yeah, daughter. That was this. Yeah. That was you know mm -hmm. kicking and screaming against the goads, yeah. knowing I was supposed to be home, but I was going to play in everybody else's yard till I went home and apologized, mm -hmm. <laughs> literally and figuratively. I was a mm -hmm. bad kid. I know but. it's been more than once, but I gave a uh, Saint Benedict medal to a lady, and I really thought that um, she needed a lot more. <laughs> Because the house, it wasn't a depression, obviously. Uh, it's not going to do enough for a person at that late in that, that stage. And then it turns out it brought her so much peace. It's like she just yes. needed 
something, and I was like, okay, yeah, because it does mean something for different people. Some people don't have that much to push before mm -hmm. they're over the hill, and then they go coasting down in the wagon. It's like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, I'm over that big hurdle. So the next one, of course, is the big, uh, the big one we're you know also familiar with way before the other metals because I don't think those were brought into light until, um, well, the TV show and our ministry before that TV show was promoting it. We put the logo and everything, you know, the the rotating logo, uh, avatars in, in the early 2000s and so forth, website. Holy water, holy oil. And oil was one of the first sacramentals salt. that was, was used by the church. Kings were anointed with oil, Ken, remember? Mm -hmm. Prophets would anoint with oil. And they dumped her right over their head. You see. And yeah, I know. <laughs> they just, they literally like, drowned him oh. in oil. It's like, yeah, we're anointing you. <laughs> Take a bath, How babe. Is this oil, and, Samuel. <laughs> I mean, anybody that was anointed, if they, you know, came out of a temple and they were dripping oil, the people were like, "Oh my gosh, what happened?" Because mm -hmm. the people expected um, that sort of oil would only be used in the commission of God, mm -hmm. or in other words, only on the orders of God. Am I not far from the truth, there, Christopher? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah, that's you know, when David. Uh, was anointed, that's what the flask was broken over and, and the oil ran down. And that's mm -hmm. what we find in Psalm 23 too, you anoint my head with oil. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's uh, it's that ancient symbol, which is where we get the term Messiah, the anointed one. And we are all anointed. Exactly. And you know, and on that, because I know you've been to seminary, I'd like us, uh, uh, Christopher and Ken, you to answer this. Doris wants to know, when can we use um, blessed oil for personal use? When is a good opportunity to use that? Do we use it when we're sick? You know, do we use it when we feel good? You know, how do we use um, blessed oil? I'll answer it for the place. Christopher, you want to take it on the person. Places, we okay. uh, anoint the doorways over the door. That's front. right, the doorways. It's kind of like a... <laughs> Entry uh, points. You know, you uh, close it off and... We put St. Benedict medals over the main entrances, and I know people are like, oh, well, why do demons need to use doors? Oh, in other words, Doris, doors. you can do this to your home. Mm -hmm. You have authority over your home. Ken's telling you, okay? And, uh, and particularly, I, I don't know, is there a particular prayer that I do at that moment? Well, that would be uh, something, just something, you know, you're drawing the, the sign of the cross. Let me give you an example, like precious blood of Jesus, Mac and Hard Mary, pray for a second heart of Jesus and mercy on us, and I do a cross for... You know that, and and but it, it's the fact that it's not here in the prayer so much that it's already been prayed over. So I just put a prayer above the doorway yes. of each room that has been. This room is clear. Let's move on to the next one, because mm -hmm. you ran it out like you ran a squirrel out, and then you close the door so it can't go mm -hmm. back in again by putting that over the doorway. Exactly. It's it's the final sign that says no solicitors. You know, so on people, what would uh, what would that perspective be there, Chris? Go ahead, fill everybody in. I, I, I mean, if you, I mean, scripturally and theologically, if you look at it, I mean, has, and even historically, mm -hmm. olive oil was used for healing. Yes. Um, and it wasn't, um, yeah, you had the, the anointing, but you also, mm -hmm. I mean, the only other time that we actually spoke of it in seminary was in healing. And, um, you know, it's, especially in the church when we have the anointing of the sick, that is what the the priest traces the sign of the cross on the forehead and on the palms of the hands while praying That's for you. Right. Um, and so you know, it must be a priest, was, by the way. Yeah. If someone yeah. was to, um, you know, use it personally, to yes, use it. You know, say someone is, man, I'm dealing with anxiety, depression. What you mm -hmm. know? Okay, fine. You know, uh, which. Uh, Ask a, a pastor or whatever, you know, please bless this, uh, <laughs> this oil. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, uh, you know, the little cross on the forehead, you know, Lord, you know, as you taught us to bind our wounds with the sweetest of oil, I pray for her, please heal me of my blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the name of Christ. So, yeah. And of course, you boys, neither one of you like to um, roll your buns in the oven. You can. Uh, what I do is I sprinkle my exercised oil on the kids' pizza. 
<laughs> I pray when I bake. Keep your health. Oh, there you, you know, go. That's why you're such good kid. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's like I just, uh, besides, you know, feeding them with sterling silver silverware that I find at resale shops, I put my exercise oil on their rice, mm-hmm. on their pizza, um, sometimes on their pasta. So you can use your exercised oil on your food regularly. As a matter of fact, we had an incident with the dog where the dog consumed so much chocolate. I thought oh. the dog was going to die and I was so mad I was going to leave the house because I didn't want to watch her die. And I fed her, met, you know, like some rolled up meat with, uh, some exercised oil on it and put holy water in her water. And, you know, four hours she was, she was like, Looking like she was dead, but she got rid of it all and she survived. Yeah, she puked it, so I, I think she it, got it, it all up. I don't so know does, you know, I mean, there's some there's yeah. something to the exercised oil and and exercised mm-hmm. water, folks. Yeah, have some have some. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yes, Doris, you can it use it on the, your husband. I'm going to defer mm-hmm. to Ken and Christopher on it. Mm-hmm. It is better since he is the head of the household for him to use it on you because um, spiritual, spiritually and authoritatively speaking, the husband has spiritual authority over the wife. The wife mm-hmm. does not have spiritual authority over the husband, although that you can pray intercession for him and bless him. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I defer to Christopher and Ken on that. One of the reasons why you can use holy oil, holy water, breath. Can she use it on her husband? Priest, and it'll work better. Well, not just blessed, but it's got to be exercised. Exercised. And to get to that in just a second is that you're bringing the authority of the church and the priest in there. You know, even if the priest isn't there because you're blessing the house uh, a few times a week, yes. for example, and the priest is not going to come over and have chili every night, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then bless your house afterwards. So, and if it's not a danger where it's going to draw retaliation and so forth and it doesn't need, you know, some higher level of, uh, you know, uh, um, handling the case, then can, you can know, it's something personal that you can do. Uh, oh, the other thing was, is make sure you, you, you do Doris blessing stuff, her husband with the oil. Have it exercise. That's removing the, uh, it's like formatting the disc before you put data on it. That's, that's removing the rust from the, uh, the metal before you put the primer and you put the full coat down. Exercise, which has the blessing following that, and you have to have salt with you for the holy water, and so the the salt has to be exercised and blessed, and then the holy water is exercised and blessed using the salt, and when that happens, there's a difference. We've seen it. Mm-hmm. Now there was a gal, you know, God bless her and stuff. It, she was like giving people holy water that she blessed, you know, but it doesn't doesn't work that way. If it did, it's going to have a little bit. If you pray. The curly and camera experiments we put in the first book, when you pray next to a bottle of holy water, a Bible, Mm -hmm. over a period of time, it becomes like, you know, radioactive in a positive way, but not in a way that it does when, you know, the the priest blesses it. It's not the same type of blessing at all. Yeah, I mean, an emergency, you know, do it. You know, if you have, you know, you. For, well, Doris is yeah. talking about using the oil to bless her husband. <coughs> I say spike her husband's food with it. When he's it. awake. <laughs> what about you, Christopher? How can she use the oil for her husband, the, the exercised oil? Yeah, put it in his food, in his drink. You know? Just well, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, if it was something that, um, you know, if it was like, hey, uh, like um, they're, they're praying together and, hey, we need to, you know, kind of intercede for each other. Then that can mm-hmm. be a sacramental between both. I wouldn't just, hey, he's asleep. I'm gonna suddenly. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go anoint him and, and pour it on him. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's gonna be. Oops, he woke what, up. What, what happened? <laughs> yeah. But if it was something like, hey, we need to take a moment. We've got mm-hmm. maybe we're facing something. We we need to pray yeah. uh, for each other and and the husband, the wife, with the well and and so yeah. forth. Or what if they're um, afraid of cancer or something like that? And you know, yeah. th- try that. You know, before you do expensive surgery, even heart palpitations. We're at the half hour point, kids, and I want to remind you, you guys can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash The Real Deals. You guys can follow us on Facebook at Kenneth and Farrah Deal OFS. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, you guys need books or whatever, jewelry, sacramentals, prayersbythebead.com or catholicdemonologist.com. I want to give away the big swag bag, you guys. And you guys, listen to us and watch us live. This is is something that, you know, 
know, we love to do, and Ken and I have talked about it, and we're having so much fun doing all these giveaways during Christmas. We're going to continue the tradition all year long, except we're not going to tell you, all right? So... <laughs> tonight kids all right just in case you didn't see it and also you have to be present to win so if you don't pipe in in five minutes okay it's 9 33 right now if you don't pipe in i gotta draw again so everybody if you if you know somebody that is in it tell them hey 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 get online real quick here's the cool picture of saint michael isn't he so cute look at those little hairs and those little wings he's adorable little and hair, this I'm is saying. my little this is my little saint michael soap he looks like he's gonna like fly away look at how pretty he is can you see that no i can't Let's really see, see. oh band. look oh, at his little, little wingies bit, a little bit. looks like a blue metal okay and this <laughs> is this is the fellowship this is the fellowship mm -hmm. of the saps mm -hmm. here we come dun -dun 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 -dun. all right kids mm -hmm. big 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 prize bag I like how. Okay, Mr. Foster says I need a thousand gallons of that soap, please, and a thousand gallons of oil. Mm -hmm. All right, spinning, spinning, spinning the wheel. Here we go. Where she stops, nobody knows. Okay, Ken, come on, come on, draw because you know what? I just, I don't want to draw. And somebody says she picked me on purpose, or oh, she did it. She knew it. It's like, no, I'm gonna make Ken do it. Well, we'll just blame him. Come on, where's stick your hand it, in there. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, we need a -da 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 drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Who Amy, gets? Uh, 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 I can't uh, read your writing. <laughs> he can never read my hand. Oh my gosh, Amy, Amy Iveson. Woo! Okay, Amy, you if you are listening or you're watching, okay, it's nine thirty-five. <laughs> Rose says, "I want a recount." Steve's like, "I want the T-shirt." <laughs> 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 Mary, oh, guess what? We're going to be giving more stuff. Okay, Amy Iveson, you've got to let me know. Okay, you got to let me know. Well, she's not in the chat today. What well, <laughs> you know, she's got, send me a PM. <laughs> send me a PM, Amy, all right? Or get a hold of me. Or call or us at 417-213-5599. 417, what was it? 417. 213-5599. 213-5599. Five five nine nine. Oh, it's on my computer. Hello. You think I could read? We'll be check. We'll be right. checking that number uh, next week anyway. Amy, yeah. check in in five, or I got to redraw. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I, I promised everybody, whoever was here. Okay. Okay, you got the timer. Onward and upward. There, I got the timer. It's going off. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> I know, because I know Amy would love this. Uh, That's right. We are going to do it over, Steve. I promised we have to We have to be live tonight mm -hmm. because this was like the big prize package Ken peeled off himself. All right. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Onwards and upwards. Next Sacramento. Are we going to talk about DeSalt? Are we going to talk about which Sacramento? <gasps> Frankincense and myrrh. Frankincense and myrrh. One of the things I like about Christmas, I like the smell of Christmas at church. <gasps> I know. It Easter. smells so wonderful and when uh, they just incense the whole mm -hmm. room. So beautiful. This is the uh, the the icing on the cake, but some people think it's the be all and end all um, because um, if you have a particularly troublesome situation, you know, infestation, this seems to go where no thing mm -hmm. has gone before, and that's from personal experience. And um, how do we explain this? Except maybe it's sort of like the smoke goes places where a few drops don't. Uh, they can't stand it. It's a smell. Let's, you know how it is with us. Okay, we have five senses. For some reason, they can get the essence of these things that otherwise hit us with the senses. You can't say that spirits have, you know, senses in the same way we do, you know, membranes and so forth. But I'm sure they can detect and they can sense everything that's in the essence of, let's just like call it a frequency. Like, let's say that... Uh, Smell is on, you know, exactly, one, you know, like one hundred four one on the FM dial, and you know, in another part of the dial, there's there's visuals. The more you hit with them, visuals, you know, physical, uh, you know, wet uh, wetness is a, uh, you know, one of the elements. You have, uh, um, you know, I, you notice what I mean. I mean, you're saying words, you're saying something, and you're putting it on the air. That's why some people oh, yes. will pray. Uh, in the background, um, or they'll have a rosary played on tape. By the way, that works, but. It's it's because they don't like the words, but it's not the same as having real people pray. Frankincense and myrrh sticks. Be careful where you buy this stuff from, because you might get it from somebody who, uh, well, you know, is satanic, and they'll purposely sell it so they can contaminate it, and basically, you know, they do that. 
So don't buy it from a place that also sells New Age and uh, and s- satanic uh, and whatever pagan voodoo and all that kind of kind of stuff like that. Do not buy it from there. Try to buy it from a uh, Catholic supply center. I don't even think the Jewish faith even pays attention to frankincense and myrrh. It's been good question. Janine wants yeah. to know, mm-hmm. um, Christopher, um, what do we do? Do we pray over our own frankincense, or how do we get our frankincense blessed, Christopher? What's the best way to do that? Um, well, I would always kind of say, take it, you know, if you're Catholic, take it to your priest. Yep, um, have them exercise not, take it. Take it to your properly ordained minister. Yep. Mm-hmm. You bet. And that has, That's that has very a special important. blessing, too. All that I'm doing, the it does, water, the salt, in the old, right. a special blessing, and, you know, that starts with, again, the exorcism and, um, you know, the, the purify it before it begins. Uh, oh, wow. Five minutes is up already. Five minutes is up already. Got to redraw. Wow. That's I'm counting. Too quick. I'm counting. Everybody, right. Somebody wants to win this, uh, and there's shame. people in the chat Sorry, room. Amy. It's okay, Amy. I'm going to give you a booby prize like Denise. You get a booby. Are oh, you going to give the mouse in the mouse trap? Yeah, we, uh, I'm going to give I'm gonna give it to the, cheese. The <laughs> yeah, I don't want her to feel left out. Okay, here's here is four. The big <laughs> prize. Oh, no way. Are you going to laugh or what? Oh, my uh, gosh. No. Oh, my gosh. This is so funny because guess who just said they wanted this? And Ken, you can't even say the name? Okay. Zulma Matos, if you are in the chat room, you have to pipe up and say, I'm here. Because Zulma, if you're not here in five minutes, we have to redraw. Zulma, Zulma, right, Zulma. But, aren't we mean? I know. Aren't Zulma we terrible? Uh, zoom, 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 Zulma. You got to say, hey, I'm here. No, wait, three weeks ago? I Check in know. or PM me. Okay, onward okay. and upward. Mm-hmm. So anything to add, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the uh, Frankenstein Murray, Farrah, Kevin, Jennifer? I, uh, this is one of you the know, good ones. Oh, uh, and Zulma's here! woo oh, okay, Everybody, we congratulations, Zulma! Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Bell, Farrah. Try you won. You. Where's the bell? Ding, 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 ding. Woo! <laughs> Happy Christmas! <laughs> Zulma gets a Christmas prize. Yeah. Don't forget, kids, we've got another wonderful surprise for New Year's and you too can soap it up with St. Michael okay or who knows it might be Benedict next week <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know which ones we got but the, part of the, the fun is the surprise of it you know. <laughs> <I know. laughs> let's spin the big congratulations <laughs> Zuma. Oh, no don't be talking to your Freud guy anymore he's crazy <laughs> spin the big wheel oh that's why I have a yeah, wheel of fortune or something like that instead of Freud Exactly. So, and, uh, anyway, frankincense and murder, so the sticks, like I said, you know, just be careful where you get it. When you get it in a more raw format and you put it into this, um, Christopher, give me a, give me a terminology. I'm not good with that. <laughs> What's that <laughs> gizmo called that you put that in? You swing it back and forth? The thurifer. Oh, no, the thurifer is the person that waves it, right? The sensor. Thurabule, Thur- Thur- that's right, it's a Thurabule. Okay. The Thurifer is the person that walks around. Okay, so it's the Ferris Bueller. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's the Ferris Bueller. There we go, right. David Landry says Thurable. <laughs> it is a Thurable. <laughs> thurable Thurabule. So, Where's your uh, Thurabule? Yeah, I got you a Thurabule. Mm-hmm. Where'd you do with it? Particularly bad cases, it's good to add <laughs> as much as you can, and that's a good way to ice the cake, so... Um. But again, all of these things are better done with the priest because it's a postulate authority, you know, going up and um, uh, the father of the household, uh, you know, and if there's no father in the household, the owner of the household uh, doesn't, you know, don't have to own a house. If you're renting it, you own it in the legal right of God during the time you're renting mm-hmm. it, even though you don't permanently own it, you know, like you can do what you want with it. You still you don't have to call the landlord and ask permission. You don't have the landlord come over just to kind of keep that uh, you know idea set aside. We were talking about scapulars a little bit last mm-hmm. week. Um, the the green scapular, and one of the particular things I noticed is like when yeah, because are, kids we were talking the scapular apron, mm-hmm. apron like a breastplate. Like Christopher was talking about the breastplate of protection that the priests wore. All these stones, supposedly, when the priest went into the Holy of Holies, they had to have these breastplates on because they believe the stones and the significance would protect them from being killed from coming so close to the place where God lived. Scapulars, after, you know, 
the, in the New Testament, as far as I know, Christopher, correct me if I'm wrong, scapulars were a um, more uh, a cause of mortification in sanctifying the soul and one's spirit to God. So when you put on this apron, it said, okay, Lord, I am basically setting myself aside for you. I am wearing this to remind myself that I am called to a, a spirituality that says, I deny myself things in order to get closer to you. Correct, Christopher? Exactly. No way. I actually got something right for a change. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, of course, they took different forms out, you know, since, since the early days. But the, the, um, it was basically, I mean, the same. And, and like you said, you know, they were the sign of, uh, especially, you know, during the, the early days of the church when the church was being persecuted. Yes. It took guts to say, okay, I think I might want to follow this Jesus. And, uh, and there was basically, I mean... We talked today. We kind of joked today about how so many of our young people need uh, safe spaces. Well, that wasn't probably uh, heard of back then. Because I can't the imagine there was anything that existed like a safe space. Oh my! Except maybe six feet under back then. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh so, my yeah. So yeah, they, you had you know this. The scapular, you know, then it became the sign of um, I'm 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 going to go into this and full with full faith that it is the right thing, and uh, here I go, both feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Hey, a big happy birthday out there to Jim tonight. Jim uh, Steberl mm -hmm. is celebrating with his beautiful wife of a year and a half, who has the most beautiful pipes next to um, Doris Day. Okay, you're better than Doris Day, girl. But Sonia, um, yeah, tell your... my mother passed away. Tell your hubby we said hello. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday out there. And folks, if you guys are celebrating a birthday close to our show, let us know and, you know, maybe I can pick Ken and we'll yeah. sing you happy birthday. That's right. <laughs> because we don't get birthday <laughs> notifications unless, you know, we accidentally see them. So say, hey, yeah, it's my birthday mm -hmm. next show and we'll be like, okay, we'll mention it on air and say happy birthday to you guys, okay? Uh, for a small donation of only oh, a hundred and twenty. Zip it. We'll take we'll take an enchilada. <laughs> okay, I'll take an enchilada with hot sauce. I'm not that denominator. <laughs> <laughs> small oh, donation of a gosh. pocket of hot sauce. Okay, so uh, Okay, wrapping, so we did the scapular thing. Yeah, we Next I haven't Sacramento. really given it out except when uh, some people said, you know, something like uh, my husband, you know, this or that or spouse. And I said, put the green scaffolder under their pillow somehow, yes. where it's not going to be discovered. Or, or lost, underneath the mattress. Or You've had people mattress. put metals mm -hmm. like where people sleep because you know what? Proximity effect. Mm -hmm. Stand next to me and you're probably going to get fed. So it's not so much. We don't really <laughs> give them away. Well, we want to start devotion, <laughs> but not for general spiritual warfare. Uh, Here's a couple of unknown ones. Particularly, I'll bring this one uh, in ooh. the forefront right Oh, here. yeah. This is amazing stuff. And I'm sure Jennifer mm -hmm. and Kevin will remember this from kids. This is something that was, you know, basically very similar to the Jewish tradition where they would put a mezuzah on, on the doorposts of the house so that they would kiss it. And it was usually a psalm. It was a handwritten psalm that they would kiss it. They would put their fingers to it and they would bless it, you know, their lips with it so they could keep God's word on their lips at all times mm -hmm. before they entered the house. Let's and that's where this tradition out. came from in the New Testament. This is one that uh, the Three Kings blessing, and uh, that one also got popularized on TV uh, for a short time by the wrong people, by the way. Like the St. Benedict Medal in 2008. I'm not going to mention the show, but Christopher, you uh, know the Three Kings blessing. We have a little pictorial of uh, some, right. you know, when you print it up. And mm -hmm. uh, if you can, go ahead and uh, share with the audience uh, what the Three Kings blessing is. And uh, yeah, if if I am thinking of the the same one, mm -hmm. um, this is the one that we do um, at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. um, at Epiphany, and it is a marking of three crosses above the doorway of the house, um, mm -hmm. the main doorway. And uh, in fact, in the seminary, a lot of us would do it over the doors to our own individual rooms. Yes. But, um, yeah. We would um, mark the crosses and, and uh, 
and with three letters, C M B, which was Latin for Christus Montana Benedicat, may Christ bless uh, this dwelling. How beautiful! And, uh, and, uh, and you know, of course, some people in the Middle Ages would, you know, kind of took those three letters as Cassar, Melchior, and Balthazar mm -hmm. as the yeah. three Magi. But um, that's what it, it's actually the Latin phrase for uh, it is a prayer, sacramental in a way, mm -hmm. of uh, may Christ bless this dwelling. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the in, the insert that you do is. Um you put in this case they have it on you know if you can see on the screen the uh the the century and then followed by the the decade two thousand and fourteen would be twenty at the very beginning of it and then fourteen on the end but I've seen it done without without the twenty um and you put them above your doorway mm -hmm. and uh epiphany chalk um is that the right word? There I go with the terminology. Yes, epiphany. Again. It is epiphany. It's the chalk is blessed. Yeah, yes. that's that's on the face of the epiphany, and that is, as a matter of fact, that is one of the most fond sacramentals I remember as a child. Is you know getting candle wax from the epiphany candle that was lit. Mm -hmm. That was considered a sacramental. Yeah, and to uh, have that wax once a year. You're supposed to be special able to blessing. Get that through uh, you know blessed through church or through church, mm -hmm. like you do with holy candles on another. Oh, yes particular day and this one is another one to seal the doorways we said something about using uh, holy oil mm -hmm. over the doorway or in, in one case uh, to nail St. Benedict medals after you know the priest or you know the house had oh, been yes. successfully delivered it's a good way to seal the hatch mm -hmm. to, to close it up and you know take that blowtorch and you know and weld it shut um, to keep the evil spirits out Mm -hmm. As long as you don't do anything evil on the inside, you know, these things, <laughs> you know, that's the problem with people. They, they bring the vampire back in the house again. What'd you do that for? You just undid everything that, you know, and that happens continually too, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yes. It's the case a couple nights ago that uh, the only, their only resolve was to actually kick out the person and then have the priest come back over and do the house. Because as soon as it, you know, the person comes back in, it's going to start gaining a foothold again, and it'll go up, and it'll be about a few days to two weeks. Oh, it'll yeah. be back to normal, or worse, because it's going to be pissed off like the badger you've been poking sticks at in the cage, or the trap. You know, they don't like that stuff. You know, call it pride or whatever it motivates them. <laughs> but it's not a good thing, I tell you what. This was, uh, you know, someone said something about this. They said they were wearing, um, how can my son, and he, he seems he's oppressed, how can he wear this, you know, this little medallion with a face of Jesus on it? Well, because it's, um, it could be um, that this depiction is an artist's rendering. Have you seen that one from that movie, uh, Heaven is for Real, I think it's called? And this little girl who became really nobody, you know, a lot of kids or people might have dreams or near-death experiences where you experience something. I, for some reason, they made it into a movie. So she had the carpenter who was working on some part of her house, uh, you know, pose, and she painted a picture. He looks a lot like Dennis D. Young from Sticks with a beard. And instead of the traditional <laughs> Jesus as described by even the Romans and, you know, a letter that was found... Um, or the saints, you know, um, th who experience it from Faustina and so forth. Well, one of the problems is is un the, the images that aren't divinely inspired are um, are just going to be a bearded guy. You remember that we heard about um, uh, what is his name? Was it a Tudor Borgia? You know, one of these. Uh, strange, uh, you know, times in the church where we, you know, you, you, the devil starts to get a grip and gets a bad pope in there or something. Uh, Caesar? You know, I think it was his first name. Well, they did, a, they did like, they had a model for a picture of Jesus, you know, because he kind of had the beard and all that stuff. And you see this one around, if I can, you know, I, I can't post it. These that you see right here, it's not so much the likeness, which is, you know, it resembles the colors and and the similarities, the hand symbols. Mary is holding uh, lilacs, which is a symbol of virginity. There's halos. 
And the most important thing being is the sacred heart of Jesus. That's the exact thing with the heart, you know, with the cross above it, with the uh, crowning of thorns around a heart, and the immaculate heart of Mary, which has a sword pierced in it. And those devotion, they have a special, uh, um, we'll say, attachment blessing. Uh, Christopher, you can extend the uh, the information about these. I'm sure they taught that about these in the seminary. These pictures have devotions. It's not just a picture of a bearded guy that people can regard as Jesus. Like I can get a picture of Dennis DeYoung, and then, and, hey, oh, hey, Dennis DeYoung's got a beard now. He kind of looks like Jesus, so I think I'll put him on a medallion and you know, maybe it'll ward off demons, you know. <laughs> Well, there's a there's a recent uh, last Da Vinci painting of uh, the, the, I think it's called oh. the Savior of the World. Oh yeah. And it recently was put up, um, identified as a Da Vinci. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Ken, as you were talking, that I mean, there are just some depictions that mm-hmm. you just something in your spirit says. This was inspired. This is yeah. uh, it's almost like a window. It's almost like they describe icons. Mm-hmm. They're a window into heaven. Um, mm-hmm. Others are like, like um, I'm sure you've probably seen the one that we used to refer as the, the surfer Jesus. Um, that was popular <laughs> oh, in the yeah. late seventies and early eighties, where he, you know, looks like he just straight out of California, just you know, chuckling it up on his way to a good luau. Um. Yeah, we could have very much done away with those. There was nothing uh, inspiring about it. There was nothing. It was one of those warm, fuzzy ones. But it's not like, like I said, the Da Vinci one or these ones where you just know that this was inspired by God. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This won't be like There's provoking. There's something within us that reacts. Yeah. Yes. Uh, crucifixes can provoke and so forth, but these have a, a built-in special devotion. Yep. And that will bless the household. And uh, so, you know, we recommend this on a certain level. And in some haunts, they uh, they turned the picture face down when it was on a mantle, or they, you know, popped it off the wall. Not usually in someone's sight. Um, usually you're not looking at it when you see it happen, because they... At some point or another, they don't want to, you know, red flag you that something supernatural is going on, so it doesn't happen in your vision, which is, you know, why people got to realize that this stuff is always not going to be so, you know, so, I don't know, uh, glorious, uh, the activity itself anyway, or dramatic. dramatic. Anything to add, Farah, Kevin, uh, Jennifer on this? Well, you know, we just had a really interesting question I think is really important to bring up because we haven't mm-hmm. talked about candles as the sacramental folks. Mm-hmm. And I ran to get a piece of cheese, and I almost missed Michelle's question. I think that's on deck, but go ahead. That's fine. It's in, it's in quo. Oh, it's ne- it's next? It's in yeah. the quo? Oh, yeah, do it now. All it's right. Well, she wants to know, she said, you know, what about blessing our candles? You know, mm-hmm. can we get candles blessed? And what's the importance of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a bees. It's got to be beeswax because of the purity of beeswax. Like but what about the tradition of any mm-hmm. candles we buy for the home? Now you're talking about having mm-hmm. candles exercise. That needs to be pure beeswax if you're using for the special intention of that. Mm-hmm. But all candles we burn because of the Prince of the Air, all candles we burn should be blessed. Correct? Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Oh, I don't know. I guess I don't have the uh, candles on on deck on that one, but. Yeah, one of the things you can do too about uh, uh, the protection spiritual warfare is you take a uh, a plate and you you pour some holy water in it. Now you know you don't need that much, just something to cover the bottom of it, and then you put the candle in the middle of it, the blessed candle. Yes. And then you light it, and that's supposed to be kind of a one-two punch for purifying the air. I heard about it out a very long time ago from my aunts um, when I was even very young. I had not tried it or recommended it so much because the other things seemed to work well enough and we, you know, basically helped them close the case, you know, through the their practices to faith and, mm-hmm. you know, the priests and so forth or whatever we might do ourselves. But it's got to be beeswax, though. It's, it's uh, to, to be most effective. The purity of beeswax. Not that petroleum stuff, you know. The... All right, any thoughts on uh, any of these things? Um 
uh, you know, the Sacred Heart, uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary, uh, Kevin, Jennifer, uh, Candle. Well, we were talking about frankincense before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, go ahead. You know, we burn frankincense here um, almost on a daily basis uh, just because of the work we do and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, yeah I like the and smell. You were talking about the, the vibrational thing. And uh, yeah, like sometimes out. I explain it to people like this because they're looking for some science to this idea of smudging or cleansing. And mm-hmm. and that is that when you take a solid and you turn it into a gaseous form, it releases a vibration. <laughs> and it's a high vibration. Mm-hmm. Love and light is a high vibration. Uh, low vibration, lower vibrational, uh, the demonic and whatnot is a lower vibrational thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you release this high vibration into the atmosphere in a sense it's been explained to me that they get sick it's almost like they get nauseous like they cannot be in that space it, it's uncomfortable for them because mm-hmm. the vibration is, is offsetting compared to their vibration and I think that like yeah. when you when you have like a, polar opposites a, a home deliverance yes. or something, you, know, you have you're, you're burning the frankincense and myrrh but you're also bringing in God into the environment. And now, you know, anytime you smudge, you know, you, the frankincense, the myrrh, um, mm-hmm. yeah. and I have the word smudge, it just burn, you know, burning. We call it um, smoking. Okay, smoke. We'd be smoking in all the rooms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not just the boys' room. It's not, no, it's not, yeah. fun, you know. Again, mm-hmm. the, the eventually the vibrational frequency will return back to the normal state I think and that mm-hmm. and I think that's why they bring God into the environment also you know yeah. but it, it, again it's a one two punch kind of thing I, I've always thought yeah. of it that way yeah so. and then yeah, when they bring this stuff mm-hmm. for the for the families in that we're helping out mm-hmm. and you know we explain to them we teach them how to use it we tell them how often they should keep it up mm-hmm. and not to mm-hmm. get forgetful about it yeah because you're working so hard on on helping people get rid of something that really has no right to be there if they don't keep up the prescription so to speak basically yeah, yeah. they can give a easy foothold for this thing to come back and sometimes unfortunately we, we've learned that they come back with friends Yeah, big time mm-hmm. and you know it, the whole thing about the vibrational um, negative and positive folks is what Jennifer and Kevin are trying to tell you is that you know, when God created the natural order of the immortals and humans, mm-hmm. uh, we were all supposed to live in harmony until um, Satan said non servium. He wasn't going to serve us because we were lower than him. Mm-hmm. And when they rebelled, their nature, the fruits of their nature is sin. They were created beautifully and perfect and wonderful. All right. Their nature is good. The fruits of their rebellion is sin so in that sin what he's talking about is we basically live in a fallen world folks they're everywhere all right so it doesn't matter what house you buy or apartment you go into there's probably something really negative there what do you do you go get some holy water all right you get your priest to come over you get your pastor to come over you go create an environment that is antithetical to the demonic, antithetical to any temptations that are going to lead you into sin. Yeah. Correct, Christopher? Exactly. And uh, <clears throat> I also, you know, if I could, I also want to kind of push the envelope a little further. To Please do. Is yes. that, is that um, the best, the probably the, the clearest sacramentals that we often overlook um, is that is the human person itself. We are, as baptized mm-hmm. human beings, yes. we are, we receive a blessing from a priest. We are called images of God. We are called the temples of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. We are that presence of God in the world. And where we go, ideally as Christians, we are called to be that medicine we are called to be that reminder we are called to lift up and so um i just wanted to kind of push that um i agree know, kind of push that, that understanding a little bit better that you know all mm-hmm. of these are good mm-hmm. and holy and given to us by god but that's why the human person is the target because we 
are the main sacrifice. We are the carrier of that good. We are the carrier of that beautiful light seed. Exactly, right. Christopher. Right. It's a good mm -hmm. analogy. Mm -hmm. Very good analogy. Yeah, the candles, I, I thought I had a uh, montage in there, but uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, whoever that was in the chat room, was that Doris? Michelle. And, that Michelle? was Michelle. Okay, yes. thank you, Michelle. Uh, relics is another one, but we're not. Uh, it's not as much like a sacramental, and those are kind of. You can't take them and get them blushed. You can make them third class. And someone brought up, uh, I think it was even on the last show, you can actually take um, anything as long as it's not, you know, it would be considered like a profane object or something. Like, don't take a whiskey bottle and touch it to a relic of a saint. Um, you know, something that's practical. But if you find in your pocket you have nothing but loose change and then you go and touch a quarter to a uh, relic of, uh, you know, St. Rita or, you know, some of these uh, saints that uh, you could you get, you know, put it in proximity effect, it becomes a third-class relic still and treat it as such yes. afterwards it, because that was your attention. Now, third-class, of course, is going to be less potent than a first-class. Um uh, we can go around and add about this. The first note I was going to mention before we go on uh, and continue on that one was uh, something very disturbing was discovered. Mm -hmm. um, so for some reason, we've kind of had it put on ourselves to be, you know, the blacklist providers. And part of the reason was because when we did Swords of St. Michael, we found more negative than positive people. People are very much, you know, pretending to be priests or whatever, guess what? There's this guy named, and they're doing in Germany, too, not just in America, in Louisville or California. Oh, that's right. That guy that called himself a cardinal or an <laughs> archbishop or something online uh -huh. selling you fake read? relics of the true cross. Mm -hmm. We turned him in, I don't know how many times. Uh -huh. It's like, don't you dare pretend you got the true cross and we got one. I, I know yours is busted wrong. Oh, gosh. I, I You know, I could have put the article up because a lot of people, you know, may not have heard it at all, but you remember when Pope Paul, uh, Pope Paul. Well, it's the sale of relics is simonry. Francis, it's a sin. Yeah. Any well, relics. Important part. Uh, yes, exactly, people. Mm -hmm. If somebody tells you they've got something so holy and it's going to cure you, it's going to heal you, no, you don't buy it. He's taking advantage of it. And he started yes. the bidding price a relic on eBay, four hundred ninety-nine bucks. Mm -hmm. Relic of the True Cross, which is a splinter. Yes. Um, and you can do the blessing of Saint Mar. It's one of the you know more powerful relics for obvious mm -hmm. reasons. But he called himself, uh, you know, bishop, and uh, he was German. That was an archbishop. He remember, and he the just like was like rubbing when, elbows with everybody there. Yeah, and he he got selfies taken, and some of the bishops totally. noticed right away. He uh, had a sash and he had a hat, and in other words, he didn't have the proper attire on as the other bishops did. So, um, he it was in a Huffington Post. You can look it up online. His name is Bishop Naparsky. But he was selling on eBay. I reported him. Um, and then, then he was selling through his girlfriend's account. Yeah, girlfriend. <laughs> Bishop. <laughs> so, you, yeah, be careful. Don't buy stuff on eBay. You you might find an estate auction, you know, on eBay. Um, we we found a collection of relics from somebody from, uh, what was the name of that? Uh, what? We found a collection of relics from an estate from... Um, What's the place in Chicago? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, it was a professor there who uh, passed away. So uh, that was uh, that's that's one of the rare exceptions there. Um, you want to make sure that you're gifted a relic and it has mm -hmm. a um, a provenance, or in other words, it has a history of people that have loved it, have used it, mm -hmm. and that there is no um, shall we say negative associated with it, or in other words. The sin of simonry is not associated with it. If you do get a relic, you you know have no need to get it blessed again, because it's not, not going all, to yeah. lose you know the beautiful level of um, holiness and piety mm -hmm. that the relic espoused on its journey mm -hmm. to you. It's yeah. just it's you don't you don't buy them and sell them as yeah, a matter class of course. Will can't lose his relic. Uh, I mean, and it's, it's and to explain to people. You know, what first, second, mm -hmm. and third class are. Why don't we turn it over to Christopher so you can explain that in detail to people. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I'm, I'm 
<laughs> on like the first and third. I'm yeah. not too about the second. Okay, the, se- the second one is on actually that. like Christopher, like you and I would wear gloves. Like remember Pio's gloves? Okay, the gloves that he wore without blood would be second class relics. The gloves with blood would be first class because it'd be ex corpore, mm-hmm. um, you know, right. of the body, and then of the. Um, you know, like the, uh, what is it, the the gloves, the hats, anything that actually touched the body. Even shirt robe? Yes, even a Get shirt a robe like would be a second a class. Mm-hmm. Like I have the second class of uh, St. Madeline de Pazzi. Remember, I've got her hair. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's first and class, if it's the a hair. metal touch to something mm-hmm. of, that would be the third. It is, and that's yeah. the beauty Proximity. of it, is there are so many, you know, wonderful... Uh, you know, just nuns and monks that have a piece of the bone. It was said that when St. Teresa of Avila died, that St. John of the Cross was so, he was so sad and so at a loss, he, he rushed to her side and he broke off her arm and took it with him because he did, he did not want to be without her. Right. Yeah, I mean, and people think, oh my gosh, that's ghastly, that's horrible, you know, that's like mutilation of a corpse. You don't understand. He traveled the journey with her and knew the mystical vision she had and saw what a soul that she had for God, and he knew that great things would be done with the peace that he had taken with him to start other monasteries and churches. Mm -hmm. So there was a great level of faith. Yeah, they were true reformers in their time of frame as well. <clears throat> totally. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly, David. Yeah, you right. can get a third-class relic touched to a second-class or a first-class. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And second-class can be touched to the saint, precisely. Good good job. Thanks, David Landry. David Landry also went to a seminary, too. Thanks for, thanks for piping in there, David. Yeah, but these are protections, silent protections, so, like, for some reason, you have to be someplace, you mm-hmm. know, I don't know, but I'm not going to promote uh, going purposely to a place that's not for the sake of charity. Precisely. You can put them in your pocket, you know, just like a crucifix or whatever, for private protection. You don't want to provoke anything with it unless you're, you know, ready to, you know, accept the consequences. And there. also, consequently, we want to tell you people that just as a beloved and blessed saint can fill you with joy for God, can make you feel more secure in your faith, can inspire you because the positive effect is like a ripple in the ocean. Being around evil artifacts such as uh, a used Ouija board, um, a pendulum that's been used to cast spells, being around negative objects like that has the same opposite horrible negative effect. So you, you you cannot think that you're going to be exposed to, oh, yeah, well, my friend brought in this into work and was showing me this. And, you know, so the blood of 10 monkeys was drank out of it. And it's from the Amazon jungle. And it's just this cool thing. Yeah, exactly, Christopher. You got my meaning. Mm-hmm. So you can't think that that's just a harmless thing because the proximity effect is still there. Just as if your friend would have brought in, let's say, a rosary blessed by a bishop. Same thing, opposite side of the coin, folks. Don't forget that. Oh, by the way, a lot of these things, um, some, you know, I, I don't want to, we don't really have time to go over that part in detail. No, we can but finish you can it up take for our any New Year's show. these things almost, and, and, you know, with exceptions, and you can turn them into an unholy object. So somebody may desecrate it, curse it, and then you get it and you're like, I'm getting all these bad things. I'm starting to have the worst uh, luck ever. Or I'm starting to get shadow visits since I put on this, uh, you know, and they call it amulet or whatever because they don't know what to call it when it's St. Benedict metal. Yes, it can offset it because it's not St. Benedict in the flesh. You can you know, purposely put an evil on something to offset the good. Of course, it's not as powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, as much as, you know, the, they'd like to believe the evil ones out there that uh, their spells and all that stuff are more powerful. That No, they aren't, but they will offset if it hasn't been blessed except by the regular blessing of a priest, the special blessing on the St. Benedict medal, you know, it's not going to be as potent and it will be easier to, you know, offset. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's just kind of a balance. It's like mathematics, you know, pluses and minuses, too. So, yeah, that's those are the primary ones. And, oh, you know, by the way, um, the, the interesting thing about the relics, since these are kind of like the most potent thing, uh, when we had... 
a possession case, she held off the uh, miraculous medal, which is uh, which is the one on the bottom right on the screen. You know, the Blessed Mother medal. Uh, it's called a miraculous medal. She held that one off particularly, not to the Saint Benedict medal. So that one bothered her more and started to burn her. So she'd have to hold the chain off, you know, like this, you know, without touching the metal. So it didn't burn her. When the spirit started coming back, because, you know, we were mentioning that last week that uh, they sometimes have these step in possessions and they can tell when it's coming back and the effects will start kicking in, some precursors and that sort of thing. So I just thought... Uh, That's pretty cool. You know, Michelle, Ken, can you grab that uh, um, rock from the cave where St. Michael appeared? Somebody has a question about that. Uh, to, okay. Yeah, and they wanted to know, you know, they have a question, you guys, for what about having um, something of a saint like... This is something I wear as a, a piece of Padre Pio's uh, um, glove. That's That's a relic. Mm-hmm. And she asked, you know, is that it's still big. effective? And what about mm-hmm. having a rock, you know, or a piece of stone from the cave where St. Michael appeared? This is, uh, this, is right. this was gifted to us by another brother who actually mm-hmm. visited there for us and said prayers for us. And mm-hmm. this is to how course, traditionally family? relics come into your family, mm-hmm. whether you're Methodist or Catholic. Somebody says, I've got something holy, and I know it's going to help you get to where you need to be. And that's the mm-hmm. whole that's the whole goal, folks. We all want to get to where we need to be. We want to invest in that spiritual life because this is this is pretty temporary, folks. Mm-hmm. And what we have is we have uh oh yes, Michelle, I'd love to go shopping with you too, but I gotta get some money first, so <laughs> <laughs> let's pray us in a money tree. But what we have is We have so much to look forward to. We have so much to look forward to. And we can't look forward to it unless we invest something of ourselves in another person. Mm 